So now that I've got my cores all shaped nicely at the center, I can then come back, I can reheat, and then I will apply one more band of that center core color, and that will even up the shape and give a little more glass for the rest of the design to uh, work around. Start on one side, work with purpose, work with a plan, work with a sequence of tasks and you'll remember and, it, and keep track of you know, what's hot, what needs what. So I'm working left to right. And I know that when I get to, say, the third bead, that the first one I worked on is going to need a little, little love, a little heat, a little warmth. And that I can then go and do the last one, but by the time I'm finished with the last one, the second one is going to need a little love. So it's, it's something that you develop a, a system in a, in a feel for if I'm doing four beads or four spacers or four buttons in alignment that you, you remember to keep things at their proper temperature. Don't let them cool too much. Now I've left them out of the heat for a good period of time. You can do it longer than you might otherwise be able to keep it out of the heat. So long as you had it even heating to begin with. If it's an uneven heat, you left a hot spot and then just left it, it's going to go under a lot more stress and strain as it's ch chilling and it will tend to shock more if you come back into the flame with it if it was unevenly heated. If it was evenly heated, it will take a lot more out of the flame time and it will be a lot more gentle in its shock when it comes back in. Alright, now I'm going to add some ivory. I want to make sure that my, my gathers are consistent from, bead to, from button to button to button so that I get a nice even amount on all of these. And one way to do that, the best way to do that is to gather the same amount same ball size on the end of your cane. So make note of that when you before you do the first one, before you make that first band, make sure you note the size of the ball of gather. Make sure that it's all evenly heated. When you apply it, it all transfers. Now I didn't put these bands on the exact center of the bead. I'm, I'm working just slightly off center and that makes um, a little more dimension to the finished button. It makes the side that is out from the garment or bag or whatever it's put on um, pop a little bit more and it makes it seat down a little bit uh, flatter against the surface. The first one looked like it was a little bit light on its band, and the last one looks a little bit thin. So I'm just touching it up, making sure that I don't add too much. If I think I do, I can go back and pull a little off by touching it with that cold cane. Because again, it transfers from hot to cold. I'm going to come back. 
put some dots around the perimeter of this collection of buttons and then they will be finished. As soon as I do the very last step, which was to bring up a little luster out of this green, because again, this is a silver laden green, and the silver in there will react nicely with the ivory, just as the ivory does with silver leaf, it does with some of these silver colors. Now these dots I'm putting on right now um, are slightly to the back side of the face of the button. So they they will be the thing that's closest to the garment, that in the back rim of the button. But it just allows me to um, put uh, two rows of buttons, or two rows of beads, uh, bumpies, on there. And they'll be spaced a little, even, a little more evenly. A lot of times people will end up cracking one of these after they've put these dots on because they've taken too much time to actually apply them and they have not taken care to keep the others warm. So it's really important when you're doing these last little design parts that you know you, you make sure that the rest of your work is not being neglected. heating these up and then I move on to the next one and allow the glass to flow it flows even after I've taken it out of the heat so I'm, a, I'm anticipating that and using it allowing that to happen with control if you feel compelled to, to push the glass around it all to move that, that ring over you can grab either side of it and just kind of push to one side with something like this. Use a little beeswax on it so that it slides against the glass nicely, but you want to have it um, nice, hold each side nice and even so that you get the effect you want, which is to straighten things up, not to, to take them out of whack. Now this one right here is, is kind of gotten a little bit small. I might, might have overheated it slightly, so I can can make it stand up a little bit more just by pushing a little pressure from the other side. And I realign it. And now it's a little bit taller. Now same thing with this one. It's a little bit short. I don't want to add more glass to make it taller, but it's gotten a little fat, so I can make it a little taller just by squeezing it. Looking good. Now I'm going to put one more row of dots around this side. A little bit smaller than the last set. 